Okay, so winning a state title in any sport is very, is very, very challenging. Getting through district and regional finals just to make it to the championship game is a huge accomplishment. So imagine doing it twice in the same school year and not just any year during the turmoil of 1968 at an all black high school. That's the true hidden history detailed in the new book Tigerland by Columbus native Will Haygood. It's a story about accomplishments in sports, but the impact was so much more. Monica Day has the story. This was a moment of great jubilation for the city, for an all-black school on the segregated side of town. It was quite a feat and it made national history. There was a lot of racial strife going on then, and sports has always brought people together. The basketball team went into the 1968-69 season a favorite, having won the year before. But this season had a deeper meaning. They knew that they were representative of every black person in the city. I was a young kid. I was like 13 years old and living on the north side. I would beg my mother for 50 cents to get into the Coliseum to see the East High School Tigers play. As expected, they dominated and took the title once again. The baseball team was a different story entirely. This was really like a ragtag team almost. They didn't have new uniforms. They didn't have a dugout. They didn't have, their baseball field was like three quarters of a mile away from the school, so they had to walk to that. Ed Ratliff was a star player on both teams. And we won three state championships while I was here, two in basketball and one in baseball. And for me, the best one was my baseball state championship. We just went out and played. We had baseball, we had bats in a uniform. And, and that's how we played all the time. They were all champions before they picked up a single basketball or swung their first baseball bat. At 16 and 17 years old, they were kids. They were playing for their team, for their school, their community, and so much more. They knew how beautiful it was to look up in the stands when they were playing their baseball championship game uh, in the uh, late spring of 1969 and see whites and blacks sitting together rooting for them, rooting for this all black baseball team. And so for them to have won two state titles in the same year in the aftermath of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination and Robert F. Kennedy's assassination is really quite astonishing. We had the best principal in the world yeah. and the, the two coaches, uh, they did a great job with all the black athletes. Even though they were white, mm -hmm. they did a great job by mentoring us and also teaching us the right and wrong things to do. Jack Gibbs, who was the first black principal in the city, realized the challenges facing his students. When other schools walked out of class and marched in protest, Gibbs kept his students in school. Uh, he said, we know we, we show it a, it a different way. We don't march, we don't protest, we do show it our own way. And it, it was tough. We understood how it was. And, and as an all black school and black team, when you go other places, you hear certain things said to you and said about you. He really held the school together, lifted up the athletes, and uh, he didn't want sports to be in the be all and the end all in the school, but he knew it was important because athletics can bring people together. Athletics did something else. The talents shown on the court and the field led to opportunities they never imagined. And as I got through my junior, toward my senior year, I realized college was maybe in my sight. But when I was drafted by the Pirates out of high school, the Pittsburgh Pirates, I wanted to go pro, play pro baseball. His mom had a different idea. Ed went to college, became an All-American, and then a member of Team USA. Those things heard by a mother who never really could dream of her child going to college had to be overwhelmingly wonderful. Look at the mountain that they climbed. They climbed one of Dr. King's mountains in their own way. So much black history here in Columbus, mm -hmm. and it's everybody's history. Thank you so much for joining us tonight to celebrate our hidden history. To learn more about these amazing stories and for more from all around the country, you can log on to NBC4i.com and look for hidden history under the Local For You tab. And we thank you so much for being with us as Darlene and I. We have learned a few things we here tonight ourselves, lot. didn't we, were, we? We did a lot of talking about <laughs> those stories. And thank you for your contributions. And we hope you can join us tonight for NBC4 at 11. 
Have a good night, everyone.